to work. All right, should we get started? Uh, hi, everybody. I'm John DeYoung. I'm the chief technologist, head of the JavaScript practice area here at Object Partners. Um, for, for those of you who don't know Object Partners, you're at it. Uh, we're a local, well, we're a regional consulting company with offices here, Omaha, Chicago, um, about 135 full-time employees, give or take, most of which are consultants. Um, what I'm gonna do today is I am going to attempt to demonstrate how easy it is to build REST services with Node.js and MongoDB and Express and all those good things by giving myself 45 minutes or so here to build a REST endpoint, a full CRUD REST endpoint with persistence uh, live coded. Um, so there will be mistakes. I apologize to those in advance, but I have the app here. Um, so I can always just figure out what I did wrong. Um, uh, one quick note, uh, I have a rule, at least for my own talks, that there's no stupid questions, only stupid speakers. So if I say something that you've never heard before, or don't understand, just interrupt me or raise your hand or, or whatever. Um, it's my fault for not being clear. I, I don't know like what everybody's background is. So if there's something that's not clear, just, <clears throat> just let me know. Everybody here is probably from different backgrounds. So to get started, um, what we have here is our directory structure. Um, we have the readme, which you just saw, then the .idea folder is just IntelliJ holding itself, and then we have a node modules folder, which we'll get into in a second, and the package.json file. So that's gonna be our starting point. So this is a package.json file. This is the root of any node project. Um, we have some metadata about the project and the important part for us is the dependencies. So this lists all of our dependencies that the app depends on. Given a package.json file in a folder, you can just type npm node package manager install, npm install, and it will go fetch all of these for you, all these dependencies for you, and it will put them in that node modules folder that we just saw earlier. Uh, I already went ahead and did that because don't wanna depend on any, any external stuff here because if it can go wrong, it will go wrong during a talk. So we've already done the npm install and now we have our package.json and we're going to start from there. So we're gonna create a new file called index.js and this will be our starting point. So if you're not familiar with Node, all Node is, is it's basically a wrapper around the V8 engine with some niceties added. Um, if you're really familiar with Node, you just got mad at me for oversimplifying it. But for our arguments, it's just, um, consider it just a way to run JavaScript on your, without a browser. So we're gonna start some quick JavaScript here. And we could tell Node, can everybody see that okay? See how much bigger I can make it. We'll tell Node, that we want to run that index.js file. We've just run JavaScript outside of the browser. So that's basically what we're going to try to do here with Node. Uh, that doesn't give us a whole lot. We want to spin up, everybody know what I mean when they say REST services, right? So we want REST endpoints. We want to do create objects. We want to get objects. We want to list objects. We want to update them and we want to delete them uh, via the REST kind of standard. In order to do that, we need to spin up a server. So we are going to use a library called Express. And we're going to create an app, which is a new instance of Express. And we're going to tell our app to listen uh, on port 4000. This will spin up a server for us. This doesn't do us a whole lot of good yet. We don't have any endpoints. So to get this app to listen to something, we want us to say that when we call get on say ping, we want to respond with the word pong. And how we do that is this get takes two parameters. It takes um, the path that we're going to listen on and a function that gets executed when that, mat, when that pattern matches. That function gets a request and a response object, and we can just send Pong back to the user. 
So real quick, we're gonna look back at our package.json. I'm using a tool called Nodemon here. What Nodemon does is it's going to watch the files for changes and it's gonna restart, so I don't have to restart every time. So when I do this, when I type npm start, we're just going to listen to that file and assuming I didn't screw anything up, it'll just restart for us. So if I run npm start, it's watching and it's running node index.js for us. And then we can just let that go in the background until I screw something up. Okay, so we expect to see ping, or to send ping and see pong. This is a tool called Postman. Um, it's a better than most, but not perfect, uh, endpoint tool utility. So we're gonna do a git on localhost 4000 and slash ping and we should see the word pong, which we do. So we've just spun up a server that's listing for us on port 4000. That's the first step. Doesn't do a lot for us yet though. So what we wanna do, so I'm a, I'm a big dog lover, probably because I have the greatest dog in the world. So I am going to spin up a CRUD endpoints to deal with dogs because you always need, when you're dealing with CRUD, you need some sort of object um, widgets are boring, so we're going to do dogs. So I've created a folder for dogs. We're going to put all of our dog related stuff into a module called dog and an index.js in there. This index.js is going to be our entry point for our dog module. What we really want to do is we want to route, since we're going with RESTful endpoints, we want to route everything that starts with slash dogs to some dog module that we haven't created yet. So we'll import our dog module that we haven't created yet. And we can, so express here is a third party dependency. Uh, node knows how to go into node modules and find that. We can also require our own modules by giving it a directory path to that module. So we just go to dot slash doc. Since we did not, we could do this. These are the same thing. Um, by default, if you just give it a folder name, it'll look for an index.js for the export. So we're gonna create a dog module that we're gonna route everything on slash dogs to. That dog module is going to be a router. <coughs> An express router. So this is going to take anything that starts with slash dogs and route it for us. And before we forget, we need to export that. Everybody familiar with this syntax? But this is doing, this is a node thing. It's basically saying that we're gonna create something in here. It's a module that is specific to this file and you can only access things outside of this file that are exported. This gives us a little bit of namespace in inside of JavaScript. Okay, so what do we wanna do? We wanna tell the router that on slash, let's return something. So this is the same function, takes the same type of function, takes a request and a response. All right. Now, this file is saying if it starts with slash dogs, hand it off to this router, and we're just gonna listen on slash, so we should get that hello from the dog module, and we do. Okay, that doesn't do us a whole lot of good yet either, but we are isolating things into our dog module. Let's create a controller. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna describe my controller and export it. So I don't forget those important steps. What we really wanna have happen on slash, given the rest endpoint, anybody? With slash dogs, I want to return what? A list of dogs. So let's create a list of dogs. A dog can have a name. Mine is bear, a breed, he's a collie, and an age is four. And create one more here.
These are all friends of mine's dogs. So this is an array of dogs. This is our data store for now. We want a list function that takes our request and response and somehow responds with our list of dogs. We're gonna take advantage of the JSON method. We're always, in this environment, we're always gonna be communicating JSON back and forth. That's kind of your normal, hopefully what most of you are doing, communicating JSON back and forth, unless you're in some uh, legacy system where you have XML or something like that. But we're gonna, in this case, we're just gonna assume that everything is JSON. So we're gonna respond with JSON with the dogs. Okay, so back to our router. We need to tell our router about our new controller. And we no longer need this method here. We want this list function, or this, this get on slash to go to the list function. Restarts, and there's our list of dogs. So now we're fetching a list of dogs out of some data store. In this case, it's just an in-memory array, and we're listing them. So what do we all want this controller to do? We want list, we want get. Let's just get these all set up right now. We want save, update, and delete, right? That'll give us a full CRUD REST endpoint. So let's start with get. Well, the first thing we need, we're gonna wanna get by ID. So let's define some ID, and we're gonna call it underscore ID, and we'll get into why in a second. Force a habit there, I put in a semicolon. So each dog is going to have an underscore ID. So now we wanna return just one dog. So let's just assume that we have an ID of zero. So now we're going to just return the dog with the ID of zero, which should be bear if I did that correctly. So let's see, how do we do that? We want to get the filter function on dogs to just return something where the underscore ID equals our ID, which is zero. And this will return an array of size one if we did it correctly. So we'll grab the first dog. Now we'll have one dog. And we can respond with him. Thank you. See, just shout it out. There's no stupid people, only stupid speaker. So now let's do a slash of get zero. We want to get that dog. Start it back up. If I go to slash zero, I expect to see bear. And I do. All right, but we also want to go to slash one, right? And then we want to get the other dog, but we don't have an endpoint for that. So instead of this zero, we can parameterize this by putting in a colon sign. And this is gonna give us a parameter called ID. In my controller, I can grab that with request.params, and I should have an a value called ID on there. Now, it doesn't work. You have a typo, <laughs> See? All right, so now we have a simple get. And while we're sticking with our in-memory database, let's implement save. So we also have a body on here. And let's assume that the body of some post method will contain a JSON representation of a dog. Obviously, if you're doing this for real, you're not assuming any of these things. You're doing validation and all that, but we're kind of skipping a lot of validation and error handling. Um, but we're gonna grab the dog from the body. We're going to give the dog an underscore ID. And we're going to call save, which in our case is just pushing it onto the array.
And let's respond with our new dog so we can get the ID. This is our new dog. Uh, we need to tell our router about it. Uh, this is just a post. So now instead of wiring up a get, we're wiring up a post. Uh, there's one other thing we have to do. Um, we are going to use, so when we're doing a post, just HTTP post, and we have a body, which is just some characters, right? And we need to tell Express what those characters represent. So in our case, it's, it's JSON. And we're going to use a library called Body Parser to deal with that for us. After we've defined our app, we can tell it to just use for every remaining endpoint bodyparser.json. Now this is gonna take whatever we get from that HTTP post and actually give us this request.body object that is actually a JSON object that we can use. Restarted nice. Okay, so let's create a dog. Let's do a post. And so we're going to need to set our body. Hey, look, I already got one there. Ellie's lab is seven. Got to get that one out of the URL. Thank you. There we go. Ellie has been saved. She has an ID of two. If we go back to get to get our list, we'll see that it's been added to our in-memory data store. Any questions so far? This, the next step is to add saving these things. We're gonna skip update and delete for now. Um, we can play with arrays all we want, but it doesn't really do us any good. Um, all right. So first thing we wanna do is we, run a, we wanna start a database server. So we're gonna use Mongo. Uh, everybody, anybody here familiar with Mongo? Awesome. So it's just a document store uh, for our purposes. I'm going to create an empty or a new folder here. Delete the one that I have. And I'm going to start. The, I call it the MonGod process. The Mongo daemon tell it to create a new database in this folder, and it says it's waiting for connections on port 2717. Create a new file called database.js, and this is just going to make a connection for us. So we're gonna use a tool called Mongoose. Mongoose is an, what I would call an ODM, object document, object document mapper. So if you're used to a hibernate or something like that, an object relational mapper, it's the same concept and it's taking this document store and mapping it into an object for us. So we can kind of give some validation to what we want our document structures to look like. Uh, we need to tell Mongoose about our database. Uh, it's at local host on the default port that we just saw 2717 and we'll create a new database called dogs. Now this is just, you'll notice I'm not doing anything here as far as exporting anything. This is just a script that we just need to run. So to get that to happen, we'll just require it and this will load it and it'll run. Now we see that we have one connection open to the database. So we've now connected our app to some sort of actual persistent data store. I'm gonna create two new files, dog.js and dog.service, because we don't wanna do everything in our controller, right? So we'll start with dog.js. This is gonna define what we want a dog to look like, so we can tell Mongo, or Mongoose kind of what this structure, what we expect this document structure to look like. So in Mongo, there's no such thing as document structure. Your documents can look at whatever you want them to look like. Mongoose, that's not the case. Mongoose, you tell it what you want to look like, sort of gives you that ability to define structure to your documents. 
So let's you grab Mongoose. So we're going to use it. And the first thing we want to do is create a schema. A schema is how you tell Mongoose what something should look like. And we're going to pass in some options here that define our dog. So we already know what our dog looks like, right? It has a name, that's a string. It has a breed, that's a string. And it has an age, and that's a number. So we're not going to care about ID or anything else like that. Mongo, Mongo is going to do that for us. As far as Mongoose is concerned, Mongoose is only concerned with name, breed, and age. So now we've defined a dog, but we have to tell Mongoose what to do with it. So for that, we build a model. And this is going to be our, our object that we're going to use throughout this app to actually interact with, with the database. So let's define our model. Calling the model object, telling it that we're going to store this in the dogs collection. So in Mongo, uh, there's collections of documents. If I'm just really high level of Mongo there, but this is going to store each one of these in a collection called dogs and defined by our new dog schema. And now we'll export our new dog type. So everything that you'll notice, sometimes I'm using capital letters and sometimes I'm not. Um, what I like to do is, even though there's, it's sort of a gray area in JavaScript, I still like to have types with a capital letter and implementation of those types with a lowercase letter. So if you want to new something up, Think about if you have if you're if in your work you're newing things up. I like to use a capital letter for that so to kind of differentiate that. Um, could probably debate that. It's just my style preference. Okay, so we're going to create a service. Same thing we did when we created our controller. Just going to define it and export it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to, to search for these dogs. Let's create a new method called, we'll call it fetch. <laughs> Pun seriously not intended. Uh, that does not take a request and response. This is a service, not a controller. Uh, so what do we want to do here? Well, we need access to our dog, right? We just defined a dog, so let's grab it. No, that's a, uh, because I used touch in the command line and I was not in the folder I thought it was in. So thank you. That also explains why that didn't show up. So I'm going to grab my dog. And we have some methods built onto our dog type since it is a mongoose model. And one of those is find. So if you're familiar with the command line of MongoDB, these, which is actually in JavaScript, these, all these methods are very, very similar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pass in a parameter of what we're some parameters of what we're querying on. We're just going to list them. So this this is an empty object. We want everything, and then we need to give it a callback. And in normal Node fashion, so normal Node fashion is what we call the error callback, which is a lot what most Node libraries use that you do things asynchronously. So this is an asynchronous call. You're going to tell the database to go out and do something. And the node event loop is going to keep handling other processes until this is done talking to the database. When it is done, it's going to call this function. And this is sort of how we do asynchronous things in node by default. The first parameter that this callback is going to give us is any error. So we should check for that error and deal with it. There we dealt with it. We're also going to take a callback, and we're going to follow the same pattern. So I'll call back with that error. Then we'll put an if blo else block. This is important. You either need to return here or put in an else block. You can't, make, you can't execute that callback twice. Assuming we didn't get an error, 
then we'll call back with the dogs that we just fetched. Now this should give us a list of dogs from the database. Of course, the database is empty. Yes, we can. That'll spit out the whole error stack for us. Hopefully we don't see that. <laughs> So now in our controller, we want to tell it about this new service that we just created. So let's get rid of all this stuff for our in-memory database. We're not going to use it anymore. So we have this fetch method. Let's use that instead. Needs a call it needs a callback. So we'll pass that in and that callback will take an error and some results. Hopefully the error is null. If it's not, let's respond. We'll set our status to 500 and we'll go ahead and send it. Again, we need another else block here because if we call response.send twice, it will blow up. So now, otherwise, assuming everything went OK, we'll respond with our results in the JSON object. Get dogs. Didn't do anything. Did two walkthroughs for this and this was fine. Thank you. And that should be the error, which is null because nothing bad happened. Ah, sorry, guys. It's not returning from talking to the database. Let's cheat. This is why you don't live code. <laughs> so we're connected to the database. Exporting service, importing service, calling service.fetch, which takes a callback.
let's go back to this. All right, well, To not create a database, but it shouldn't have yet because we didn't do anything. Yes. Okay. I deleted something somewhere that's simple. Pong works. Get dogs does not work. Oh, somehow that auto completed to dot slash dog dog. So when I drug those, <laughs> when I drug those files in IntelliJ over, it refactored for me. Thank you, IntelliJ. <laughs> All right, there's that. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> now we should talk to our database. New talk rule, don't use an, an IDE if you're. <coughs> now we get an empty list from our database. Don't use an IDE, yeah, especially live coding. So don't, yeah, turn off all auto things. All right, <laughs> so. I'm glad we figured it out though. I was kind of starting to wonder. We have an empty array coming back from our database. Um, this, by the way, is a command prompt into the database. Interesting thing about Mongo, you'll see that it only has one database. It's called local. Um, it doesn't actually create anything. So we told it to create a database called dogs. It doesn't until you actually need it. Um, and programmatically, we can connect to any database you want. <coughs> And create and destroy them on the flies on the fly and uh, the database is just a logical collection of collections for lack of a better term so let's skip to save so we want to save something so we can see them in our database okay so we're gonna save a new dog Let's call this data. This is a data representation of a dog. We are going to create a new dog. And we're gonna pass in that data. So this is a JSON object representing a dog. We're gonna create a new dog. And Mongo, or Mongoose, gives us this nice save function. Takes our error callback. And we can do the same thing.
So if we go back to our controller, we want to use this now. So we're going to call service.save. We need to define our callback. And we want to save the body of our post. And this should save a new dog in the database for us. I'm going to accent the word should. Everything restarted fine. So if we redo our post, Ellie saved. So now we see that we got a couple things that we didn't talk about on Ellie. We have a version. This is the version of the document. Uh, we're on version zero. Just is created and it has this underscore ID, which is an object ID, which looks to us at the moment like a random string. If we go back and do our list, we now have one dog in there. Uh, let's do one more. So we have more than one dog in the database. So now we have more than one dog in the database. So let's implement Git. So we have a little bit that we have to do here with Git. Um, this is the one that I'm just going to go ahead and copy because I always forget what. Which things are capitalized there, but we want to deal with the thing called an object ID. So when we're passing JSON across, we are only handling strings, numbers, and dates, right, a JSON. Um, we want, however, to convert this random string into an object ID so we can fetch on it. So with get, we want to create a new ID. from our ID parameter. Now we have an actual object ID. I'm going to jump over to here. I'm going to reuse this same fetch method. So let's have a fetch method that actually takes some parameters. Now we can filter on anything we want to. We don't need to create one just to fetch by ID. In our DAW controller, we'll need to modify our fetch method to deal with that, or fetch call. Now I can use that here. So we'll say service.fetch, where ID underscore ID equals ID, and take a callback. Let's do the same thing. So now let's see if we can fetch one dog. <laughs> All right. So now we can fetch one dog. And we can fetch the other dog. And let's move on to update. Might actually get all the way through this. First thing we want to do with update let's wire it up. So we're going to use put, put for update. And in our DAW controller, let's start with the service. Let's create a new update method. We want the ID of the dog that we want to update and any data about that dog that we want to update and a callback. 
So now we can use the static update method on dog. And we can do the same, it takes that same idea of a set of parameters. So our parameters are going to be underscore ID is equal to this ID. So this should only update one dog. And we want to update, this will just be key value pairs for data that we want to update. And let's take a callback. <coughs> Tell our controller, we need to do the same thing. We need to grab this ID. Update with that ID. We'll assume the body contains all the updates that we want to make. All right. Flew through that pretty quick, but let's say we want to update. We'll update bear. So we'll do a put, create a body. We need to put to the ID. Uh, we don't, we're not, we're never going to modify the ID. We're never going to modify the version, but bear is actually a border collie. So let's do that. And let's say he just turned five. So we're going to update some fields about bear. It was okay. And it says the number modified was one. So if we do a get, we see that bear has been updated. He's now five and he's a border collie. So that's update. That's a very good question. My guess is we, that's a very good question. Um, I think mongoose is adding that not Mongo, but I'm not sure. And we didn't. We probably need to explicitly tell Mongoose to deal with that. I've never noticed that in this. I've, this, I've done this before, and I've never noticed that. I'd have to look, but I can get back to you when I can look through the documents on Mongoose for that. Uh, Delete the same things. Very similar to update. Except we're going to use the delete method. And in our service, we'll create a delete method. We don't care about data. We just need the ID and the callback. And we'll wire that up. Get our list of dogs. I do not want to delete Bear because he's my favorite. One modifier. Okay, but zero modified. So that means there's still two. Yep. So we're going to call the delete method on the dog. Trying to go fast and copy and pasting. Let's do this again. Sorry, it's a remove. You're not deleting a document, you're removing it. There it is. And so now we only have one on our list. So now we've built this uh, REST service in 46 minutes um, that it's completely persistent to the database with uh, even getting through a couple of bumps. <laughs> so any questions? Uh, is this recorded or can we get a copy of the code? Or? It is recorded and you can get a copy of the code. Um, The 
code is at github slash John DeYoung dogs demo. And I will go ahead and make that public right now. Maybe. Oh, for the love of me. It's a new laptop too. I will make it public when my account becomes unlocked. <laughs> yeah. I uh, do believe that's true, yeah. Okay. Right. No, I, yeah, I agree with that. I actually really like, um, and I think the world is kind of moving to observables. If you look at the RxJS library, um, in all my production code, I wrap all of these in observables. And I greatly prefer that to definitely to error callbacks, but even to very, for one off things like accessing a database. Um, and by one off things, I mean, I want you to go do something and I expect one value back, right? They're very similar to promises. Um, but they're also great for handling streams or you know, data that changes over time because you can you can get that callback multiple times once you subscribe to it. Um, and just for the sake of consistency across applications, I've just been using observables, even though, like I said, functionally, they're very, for the one-off values, they're very similar to promises, how you use them, just so that inside of an app, if I'm already using an observable for streams, I'll use the observable for instead of a call, error callback or promises or whatever. But for this, I didn't want to get into that here because it was just another layer of complexity to add. So I just went with error callbacks. Anybody else? All right, thanks for uh, bearing with me through my little refactor issue there. <laughs>